Everyone, thanks for the speedy turnaround. Hi. Who would like to kick us off? <laughs> there goes your turn. <laughs> I'm from the Portuguese uh, National Broadcast. Um, surprised by this Portuguese uh, team. No, I'm not surprised. We have seen them a couple of times and we, they've grown very much. So that's also why they qualified for the World Cup for the first time in history. So no, I wasn't surprised. I think um, that um, um, we just could have scored a little more. Worried with your team? No. Okay, thank you. Yes, we'll... Okay, we'll go to Tom. Thank you, sorry. Um, Serena, how would you sum up the performance? What are your main thoughts? Uh, well, of course, my first thoughts are that I, I am, but also the team is very disappointed that we uh, didn't win this game. Uh, but we also take a lot of learnings from it. And I think at moments uh, we saw the things that we really had been working on, that uh, we wanted to show an, a way of creating chances, scoring goals. I think the first half we were a little bit too slow. So the ball tempo was too slow and we had too many players behind the ball or very close to the ball. And then when we would break lines, we didn't have enough numbers uh, higher on the pitch. I think we did that a lot better the second half. Um, so we had players higher on the pitch. We created more chances, although I think in the first half we also created a couple of chances. Um, but we just didn't score. Um, and then still, I think we had moments that were really good and moments that we could have done a little better. Uh, you know, the final pass, we could have done at the moments better than really created a 100% chance. And despite all those things, I think we still created so many chances that we could have scored. So um, we also changed. Um, we had lots of substitutes and that needs some time to connect to. I think we did that really well because that kept up the game going. And it, you, yeah, we kept keeping the, the ball and moving the ball and creating chances to score. And you asked on uh, on Friday how close you were to knowing your starting eleven. Are you closer now, or do no. you still have some questions? No, I'm closer? not closer now. But I'm not sure if we um, like. That, um, I'm not sure if we get closer than this. The, at the end, you have to make decision. I think at some positions it's really tight, and um, we have some time now. Um, so no, I'm not sure. No, and this is not the time to make the final decision because we still have a couple of weeks to go. Thank Thanks, Tom. We'll go to Emma. Hi, Serena. Hi. I just want to ask about Lauren James and her performance in the second half when she moved into sort of a more number 10, slightly deeper position than what she was in the first half. Mm -hmm. What traits do you think she provides in that role and were you pleased with her performance? Yeah, I think she, um, well, I haven't spoken to her yet, so I'm not going to review her in detail. <laughs> you know, I don't like to do that anyway. But um, now you, you can tell that she can play on the side, but she also can play in the center. Uh, she's tight on the ball uh, and she's very powerful uh, and has vision. I think uh, we could see some moments that she did really good things. And I also think you could see some moments that she could have made a decision a little quicker. Um, so we'll, we'll review that with the team later. And in terms of where the team are at going into the World Cup, I know you sort of touched on this, but um, do you feel that your team is in a better shape going into the Euros, perhaps, than what they are going into the World Cup? Or do you feel just as confident as you were last uh, summer? I don't relate that to each other. I think the team has changed. Uh, so there's another team dynamics now because we have other people in the team and different qualities. So it's a new situation. Um, and with this situation, we continue to develop our style of play with the individuals we have, and that's how we approach it. I think we're in a very good place. I think we had two very good weeks uh, on and off pitch. I think this game uh, was very, very helpful, although we are disappointed we didn't score the goal. I think, you know, if... if um, if you see how the game went and what we wanted to do and how we want to play, that you can tell that we really know what we want to do. And, um, and that's really what we're working on. Thanks, Serena. Thanks, Emma. There were two original questions over here, so we'll go to the lady in the green coat, please. Hello, Serena. Hi. I'm Maria Pedros from uh, Portuguese uh, television, Canal Um In your opinion, what are the best qualities of uh, the Portuguese national team? Uh, and uh, where do you think they can reach, uh, or what do you think they can reach at the World Cup? Well, I'm... Um, 
I'm not uh, a commentator of Portugal. I'm also not the coach of Portugal, so I'm not going to tell you what I think because it's I'm really busy with my own because team. we are from Portugal, so <laughs> it's important to know what do you think about. Uh, I, th I about think they Portugal. played a good game. I think um, the Portugal Portuguese team has played uh, where one has improved. Uh, there's a lot of speed up front. They want to play possession game, but they also. Uh, don't um, are not scared to play the long ball and they're, they're very dangerous. We saw that at the Euros too. So uh, it's a really a team uh, that taken to take in account. Hey, thank you. Thanks You're very welcome. much. We'll go to Dan just behind you. Thank you. Hi, Serena. Hi. Um, you mentioned about this game, you know, being useful. You know, the outcomes. But you know, do you come away with more questions or more answers? Oh, more answers. And um, answers already give another question, of course, because we always want to improve. We are, we always think, okay, where are we now? How we want to improve? What do we need? Uh, and then we also think, of course, what's the next opponent? Thanks, Dan. We'll take the mic over there. If we can get it to Molly and Dom, that would be much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Serena. Hi. Um, I just wonder how how many of those subs were, were kind of pre-planned with the idea of, you know, the loading and stuff for the players because it's the first time they've played in a game in a while. Um, or, or were they decisions that you made kind of in-game? No, it's it's what we actually always do with, with friendlies that we think, OK, who do we have in front of? Where are we at? And now, of course, the team came out of holiday then we had two weeks of training uh, with, with a break in between. So you also have to be aware of the minutes and the load of players. And then we see how the game goes and then we make our subs. So we just think in scenarios, who could play there? What if things happen early in the game? What later in the game? And who ahead of the game do we really, um, do, we, do we have to t be aware of in, in minutes? And maybe it's been a little while since Alex Greenwood has, has played in that left back role, obviously, we know it's an area where there's not a huge amount of options that naturally play there at club. Um, I just wonder if, if you see whoever plays that position, can they switch between centre-back and left-back at the tournament? Or would you like to see whoever you start as left-back kind of stay as a left-back? I can't give that answer yet. Um, because you don't know how the, the tournament will develop and who's available. Um, so we always think, OK, you know, we all know Alice can play left-back. For us, that's how we approach it. And she can play centre-back. Uh, and then an advantage is on the left side that she has a left foot. And that's easy then when they really press high that you can get, come out of press, press. So those are the things we take into account. And then at the end, we'll make decisions. Thank you. Thanks, Molly. We'll just go to Dom behind you. Hi, Serena. Hi. Um, obviously, ahead of the European Championships, you had a clear striker, which was Ellen White, um, who went through as a striker for the whole tournament. We don't um, have access to your brain, so we don't know your thinking in terms of Alessia Russo or Rachel Daly. Obviously, they got a half each today. Is it a little disappointing that they both squandered so many chances? I mean, I counted four for Rachel Daly and eight for Alessia Russo. Yeah, well, uh, first of all, I think uh, the last Euros that actually Ellen and Alessia were about a kind of a team because Ellen would start and then Alessia would finish. So I think this, that, that was how that, that developed during the tournament. And now we have, um, we chose three centre forwards uh, in our squad. So that's um, Rachel, Alessia and Bethany. Um, and I think the first thing is you first want to create lots of chances and then see how we execute that. And yes, it's disappointed. Of course, they, they want to be ruthless and want to score those chances. Um, and yeah, today they didn't. It's not a worry for me. Um, uh, it's just we want to get into, the, into those positions. And when you get so much into those positions today, I think that's pretty good. Uh, but of course, we want to do the final touch too, and that is to get the ball in the net. So we all know that. And, and can I also ask you about Chloe Kelly as well? Um, I think that Lauren Hemp and Lauren James got the bulk of the game time out wide, particularly during the Arnold Clark Cup. But I remember the final game against Belgium, um, Chloe Kelly came off the bench and was really impactful. Um, it felt like the same was, was the case today. Do, do you feel that she's maybe your most informed wide option and, and how close is she to, to kind of being in the starting lineup for the, for the World Cup? Yeah, again, you can't... Uh, I, I think the competition in, uh, in our team on that position is so high. So you can't, like, now uh, this is who we start and they're still in competition for... Um, uh, for the first game in the World Cup to start and then afterwards we don't know because they actually they, they all bring something different 
and Katie Robertson is also knocking on the door uh, at some moments. So, you know, it's just where are we now? What do we need the next game? And we have options and that's just really good. So. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Don. We'll take a final question from Catherine just in front of you. Thank you. Hi, Serena. We've spoken before about how teams might set up to frustrate. What did you do? Oh, yeah, broken, broken metatarsal. Oh, but it's... didn't play football. No, well, not at the minute, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, we've spoken about how teams might um, set up to frustrate England at the World Cup, and um, Portugal probably weren't quite as deep as some of the other teams England have played in, in recent months. But there were quite a few stoppages at times, which maybe um, affected the rhythm. But because of kind of how many chances England created in the second half, do you think that's kind of shown progress in terms of playing these teams that might look to sort of frustrate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if we if we would have made it ourselves a little easier to score earlier, then you know, then that time they take it from their own time too. I think they didn't drop that deep as some other countries we played. Uh, we just forced them to go deeper because we we yeah because of our game. Um, and you know, I'm you always think what's the plan? How you want to create chances? And, and you want to we created so many chances. And when you don't score the goal, you just keep going try to 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 score. That was today a little a problem. Um, but if you see how many chances we created, I think we had 23 shots on goal. So yeah, there, there, there won't be many matches that we then won't score, I believe. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks to you all. Um, see some of you in Australia. Thank, Thank you. you.